Okay, hello and welcome to this Bucket Plugin Development tutorial. Um, in this video, what we're going to be covering is custom crafting recipes. So, this is one of the things I've had on my to-do list for quite a while, um, and it's time. So, <laughs> there you go. So, custom crafting recipes, as the name suggests, is the feature that you're able to, from your plugin, able to add custom crafting recipes. So, you can add you know, new results for items arranged in the crafting table. So um, these are added to the server and you only need to do this once so we're going to be doing this just once in our plugin when it enables. So it's pretty simple really. It's just one single file that we're working with. But before we go over into that uh, I just want to quickly go over what we've got already um, and that is the basic plugin class which we're looking at at the moment. Um, you can see it extends the Java plugin class and then I've set up the plugin.yml file here just to uh, you know, this is the standard what you put in the plugin.yml, the name of the plugin, um, the version, and the main, which is the class, the full path to the class. Um, so, as you can see here, there's only a single file, um, because that's because, like I said, the recipes only need to be added once. So, what we're going to be doing is creating a, our, well, the on enable method, and that's where we're going to be adding our recipes. So, because these recipes need to be added to the server, the first thing we need to do is get hold of the server. So let's create a new variable called server. This isn't strictly necessary, however I find it to be a bit neater than calling the getServer method all the time, which obviously would be completely valid, but uh, personal, personal preference really, more than anything. Up to you. So, now that we've got hold of our server, we can go ahead and add some recipes. But before we do that, we obviously need to create those recipes. So there are two types of recipe that you can create. One is, well, the first one, the simplest one, is a shapeless recipe. And that is where you can put the ingredients into the crafting uh, grid in any order, any location, and it just makes the result without like requiring them in a certain position. So a shaped recipe is the other one, and that's where you require the items to be in a specific, like, sort of orientation in the crafting grid. So an example of a shaped recipe is a pickaxe, because you need to shape it like a pickaxe, and an example of the other one, shapeless recipe, is something like um, the food, the new food things, pumpkin pie, they can just be in any order. And I think cake as well, I'm not sure about that. Um, so let's go over the simplest one first, the um, shapeless recipe. So we're going to create a new variable, it's going to be a shapeless recipe, uh, like that, I think, something along those lines, um, and we're going to call this variable diamond, because it's going to be a recipe for a diamond. Then we're going to create a new shapeless recipe. This takes a single parameter, as it's to the constructor, which is a item stack, and the item stack is the result that you're producing from this recipe. So in this case, we're going to create a new item stack and we're going to use a single parameter here which is just the material that we want to create the item stack of and this, in this case it's just going to be diamond so let's just fix all these underlines by importing the various things uh, item stack and that should do that, so good um, you can actually change the amount so say if I wanted 10 diamonds I could do 10 like so um, and I believe the next parameter is the data value uh, yes it is. Uh, so you can create like different colours of wool and things like that using the data value parameter. But I'll leave that up to you. So, once we've created the result, we need to define what the uh, ingredients are for this recipe. So what we do next is, using our diamond variable, we do add ingredients. So there are a couple of options here. You can add, um, well essentially what you want to do is add, well, let's just go for one of the example like this. So the first field parameter is the amount of that item. So say if we wanted to make a diamond out of seven pickaxes, you would use seven here and material, uh, I don't know, wooden pickaxe or wooden axe, just because why not. Um, for example, what we're going to be doing is nine coal. So we'll do material coal because of that whole thing that you can apparently make diamonds from coal, which is, yeah. Um, 
So once we've done that, that's defined our ingredients. You can only add up to nine. If you try and add more than nine, it just won't work. You'll get an error. Um, reason for that is obviously the biggest crafting grid is the workbench, and that has nine slots. So adding more just makes it impossible to make that. So it's pointless. Um, so yeah, that's that. So once we've done that, that's all we need to do for our shape plus recipe. So then we can just add it to the server with server add recipe. And then we just pass in our recipe, which is diamond. So if I just export this plugin, like so, which I've already set up with the export thing, I've covered that before, so should be familiar. And then we'll start up the server and we'll see if it worked. Which it does seem to have loaded, which is good. Just ignore the world guard spam. Now just connect to the test server and we will try and craft uh, a diamond with coal. So you can see if I just put some in here, it doesn't work until I add the final one. reason for that is that if, even if you have multiple, there are nine here, the stacks don't count. So you can only do single item types. Anyway, once I add the final one, you can see that a diamond appears, and I can take this diamond, and these two are just left over. So there you go. That's a real diamond, and we've crafted it from coal. So it is possible. Who knew? Hooray. Okay, so what we're going to do next is add a shaped recipe. So I'll just quit the game, and just click that because it makes it lag less, and we'll stop the server, and go back to our code. So once we've... well, next thing is basically following the same pattern. So we'll create a new shaped recipe, and we're going to call this Emerald. Is that right? I think so. Um, so this is going to be a new shaped recipe, so like so, and again it takes the item stack as its parameter, so new item stack, and we'll just use the simple, why would you create a new item stack with an item stack as the parameter, that seems very odd. So let's just create a new item stack using emerald, like so. Now these are slightly more complicated, the first thing we need to do is define what the shape is going to be. And the way we do that is by using emerald, no, not email, emerald shape, like so. Now this uh, function, method, even, takes an unlimited number of parameters, although it would only make sense if you use three. In fact, it probably gives an error if you use more than three. Um, and each one of the parameters corresponds to a row in the crafting grid. So, for example, if I had three strings in here, like so. That corresponds to something in row 1, which is this first one, row 2, which is the second one, and row 3 is this next one. You can actually arrange this in a slightly more oops, logical format if you prefer, however it makes the code look a little bit long and ugly, so I won't be doing that. Uh, well, I will for the example, but after that I won't. Yeah. Anyway, inside of these strings you have to define uh, characters which represent materials in the grid. So, usual way to do this is to use the first character. So our crafting recipe for this is going to be a lava bucket in the center of the crafting grid, surrounded by coal, because why not? So what we're going to do is define three C's here. So CCC, as in coal, 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 as in three coal across the top of the grid. Next row is the middle row, so this is coal, lava, coal. And then the bottom row is coal, coal, coal again. So now if you find that, you can sort of see the shape here of, you know, the grid. So I'll just go ahead and make this look nice again. Obviously it's up to you how you want to do it. I mean, some people would find it much more logical to leave it in a grid format, but um, it's not that complicated once you get the hang of it, really. Anyway, what now we've done that, what we need to do is define, or we need to tell the server which, you know, what letter each of these materials corresponds to at the minute it doesn't know that C is coal, C could be charcoal. So what we need to do is go emerald, again not email, and we need to set ingredient. So this pr uh, method takes two parameters, first being the character, so use single quotes here, um, so in this case C, and we're going to link the C character to the material coal, like so. And we'll do the same for the other letter. So set ingredient char of L or char. Yeah. Um, I've just got a feeling I'm not saying that right, but whatever. And we'll set this to a lava bucket. So there we go. 
So that's our recipe complete now. The server has all the information it needs. I'm just going to remove that email import because it's starting to bother me. So let's just go server, add recipe, and we'll just add emerald. So let's give this a export once more. And we'll start up the server again. And then head over to the game and join. Now we should be able to craft an emerald by putting coal around the edge here, like so. Doesn't do anything yet. If I put that in the middle, we'll get a diamond because that was our previous recipe. Uh, just take that out and swap it for a lava bucket, and you can see we get an emerald as the result. And I can take that and we get the bucket back because that's how it works. So, yep, emerald. Good, good. So that pretty much covers everything. Final thing to note is that the shapes you define. So let's just quit and do the final example. So stop the server. Go back here. So just one thing to note is that these don't have to be three by three. You can do any shape. Um, so say if, for example, we wanted to create a four by four one, which is kind of boring, but that's just what we want to do for this example. Um, so we'll create a new shaped recipe and this is going to be called coal or be equal to a new shaped recipe and it's going to have a new item stack and it's going to take a coal ore like so so we're creating a recipe for coal ore so then we'll do coal ore not core I don't know what I was typing there coal ore shape, take two strings, so we're going to have two rows of the crafting grid, and we're going to use CC and CC, so we're creating coal ore from four coal, which is a pretty daft thing to do, but why not? Then we'll do coal ore, set ingredient, C, material, coal, and then finally we'll just add it to the server. So add, oops, <laughs> Yep, typo. Add recipe, color. Okay, there we go. Just probably worth pointing out that even though we've used the same letters here and here, this is a different recipe, so you do still need to rebind the characters. Anyway, final export, final startup, and then we'll just show that if it ever loads, there we go. Just join, and we'll just show that. Um, Placing coal in like a wrong format, like this or this, that's four, but it's not in the right shape. Wrong shape, wrong shape still. Take that out, take that out, and then we get coal ore. So there you go. Wonderful. Okay, so that pretty much covers everything there is to know about custom crafting recipes. Um, so yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching, and goodbye, I guess. <laughs>